Good morning. So today we are going to talk about the repository pattern in Laravel. It is a controversial topic in the community, so um, hopefully you'll learn a thing or two and get to know my opinion on it. So without further ado, let's get started. The example that we'll be using this episode is obviously a blog post because it wouldn't be a Laravel tutorial without a blog post. So we'll have a title, body, source, and publish that, which is notable. Uh, I have also created a resource for it, uh, a factory, a seeder, and whatnot. So we have the, the base things that you would need to basically, you know, start with any, any new model. Now let's create a simple controller that would have accrued actions for our blog post. So let's do phprc and make controller, blog post controller. And here we'll have our, you know, default index, our store, update and delete. Should really uh, add some automation here so I don't have to write it every time. Uh, either way, now we can go to our route file and here we can simply do, you know, get posts. We'll return our blog post controller and then our index method. Let's add the same for post. Put delete and you know, we also need to change the right side here. So uh, the correspond and that seems to be it. We'll simplify the code here and this is a good start. So what you would do normally is uh, here you would do just something like return blog post resource, you know, collection, uh, blog post, all. I guess we don't have users, but you know, you could code this by user, it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, you would do something like this, then we'd have our store, you can maybe even add like show methods. Maybe here we have a blog post and this would return no blog post make a blog post resource make blog post. I don't know what I'm writing today, but it's definitely not code. Uh, okay, let me just fix that. Here we would also have a blog post. And you know, we would do something like a uh, blog post update data. We'll add data up in a sec. Let's just use an empty array for now. Here we have a delete, blog post, blog post. And, you know, here we would return blog post, delete. Here we would return blog posts, create. Create. All right. So first of all, let me adjust this because I obviously didn't pass the blog post here. Post. Uh, we'll add one more for show. We get posts, blog posts, and this would be a show method. Okay. Okay. Now let's make a firm request. So it would be called blog posts request. Let's inject it here and here. Blog post request. And we'll need the same one here. And here we'll simply pass request validated. And the same will be true for up here. Okay. Uh, I think we have the boilerplate done. For the sake of being precise, let's just fill this here so it makes sense. Well, let me just copy the values from here. Let's just make them more required for now. Uh, I also create an enum for the blog post source. Uh, so let's just do enums and here we can do blog post source. Uh, this will be an enum that will correspond to a string. And here we'll have two cases, one for the API. And this is basically what we had in the other episode and one for the app, doesn't matter. Uh, now in our blog post, We'll just map it. Uh, so our source will be mapped to blog post source class. 
which we have to import obviously and that seems to be fine and here we just need to pass a new enum and then pass our our beautiful enum here and let's just say this is date and that's all we need this is all of the validation it's everything uh we don't really care about this this aspect of the application i just wanted everybody to be you know up to speed with what we are doing all right so now what's great about it and what sucks about it first of all it's great because it's simple we are able to create a more or, more or less functioning very simple but blocks in what five minutes maybe uh probably half of that was me fixing the typos so this is great like we are able to be super fast the only thing we are missing is like gates and stuff but for our example it doesn't matter let's say that's in their minute to our workflow who cares it's super fast now what sucks about it well not necessarily anything you could argue that uh if you were to you know create this blog post or just use it in multiple places you could end up with in duplicated codes um you could argue that the controller is not responsible or shouldn't be responsible for getting access to the database level you could argue that this application is leaky so there is no separation concerns and you could also argue that it's hard to test this in isolation so basically run tests against this code without getting access to the database you could easily test this uh in a feature test but it would be you know harder to make a, to, to test using a unit test so you know these are a couple of things that you should consider now, me personally, I rarely use repositories. This is because they add a lot of bloat to the code base. However, if you're building an enterprise application and you're building more complex queries, you, you want to be more strict about how data is accessed and passed through your application, repositories can be really useful. And if this is for you, then great. Let me show you how to actually implement them. The pattern is that simple. Uh, that's mostly because it's a simple PHP class. The idea is to delegate all of the calls that we are making directly to Eloquent to a third party class. Well, not third party, but a separate class. That's what I meant. Um, so what we can do in, is in our app directory, we could create a repository, repositories uh, folder. And in here, we could create a blog post repository which you cannot see because I'm great at recording. Now you can. Blog post repository. Re and obviously I made the typo. Repositories. Hard word. Okay. So we have a class. This class will basically wrap our eloquent calls. And on top of this, what's nice is that we can create a base repository. So let's do this base repository. And I made a typo again. Okay, now it's fine. Now, the proper way of using this pattern in theory, you know, because we are going for the, the enterprise level, is to use a lot of interfaces. Now, this is purely optional. You can use them. You cannot use them. If you use them, this is nice, because then, in theory, you could even swap your, your repositories that access the blog post on the fly. And, uh, you know, you could have one blog post repository that saves it on your disk and one that saves it on the cloud drive or whatever. Um, you could do this in theory. This is the, the proper way to do this pattern. Now, do you actually need it? I don't think so. But we are going to be decent people and we are going to create our, our interfaces. So let me just do the blog post. I'm sorry, let's start with base repository interface. And let's do one more for the blog post repository interface. All right. Okay, so our base repository would implement the base repository interface. And our blog post repository would extend the base repository and implement the blog post repository blog post repository interface now because this line is very long you can tell this is an enterprise application and <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just making jokes here 
Uh, so here in our base repository, we could just create a construct. And here we could accept our model. So our model would go here. We can use the protected property. And this is basically a place where you can put all of the shared logic. Now in our interface, um, we could define something like public function find. And here we could, uh, we are not going to declare the return type yet. So the find method would, you know, accept an integer string. This will depend on our application. If we know that, if we know it, then we should just use the one. If we use both, we should probably use both of them here. Uh, there's a couple of ways to approach this. This doesn't matter. Uh, let's say that our application uses int for now, and that every model uses int. So we could, <clears throat> so we could simply add this to our interface. And now, since our base repository implements the interface, we just need to add the method stab, and the method stat would basically do return this model find ID. Now, the big thing that we need to decide now is what will our repositories return? And the most flexible way of doing this is you just return the model. However, this is not ideal because in theory, um, this is a leaky abstraction. So this basically means that, okay, you are wrapping the eloquent calls, you know, in those great repositories. However, what does it do if you can still call whatever method you want on the controller? if you return an, you know, a model instance from here. So what you would do is you would do something like this to array. So this way you would return an array from our find method uh, or a null because our find could not find the method. We could obviously, you know, do something like if there is no model, then throw an exception or just do find or fail. And now we could do something like this doesn't matter for our example it doesn't change the, the pattern you can implement it however you want and going back to our blog post repository you know we don't need to implement the find here anymore because it's implemented in our base repository that's how inheritance works in case you didn't know what's the problem is that like you cannot do it for a single method so for example if you define a create uh here and it accepts data right then your base repository obviously has to comply with the interface and you do this model you know create data you return this then you cast cast it to an array and you'd be good uh the problem is when you start to introduce stuff like dtos so we did talk about dtos in the previous episodes basically dto is a class Data transfer objects. Let me just create one for us really quick. Log post DTO. We'll have a construct. In our construct, we'll, we'll define read only public um, string title, string body, uh, blog post source, and let's do carbon. And then just do published at, and this is nullable. So let's do something like this. And we can add a helper method for us that would be able to create it from request. And our request here would be blog post requests. And you could simply do return new self and now, you know, pass the title. So it's requests. Validated title. Uh, let's do the same for the body, the source. And here we do blog post source from this. And for the publish that, we would do publish that. And we would simply do carbon parse. And now we have our class, it returns the data. Now we can see the problem. That our blog post repository doesn't comply with our base repository, so it's not worth having it here if we want to use DTOs and be really strict about what data we want to pass. Unless you would create a base DTO and 
use the base DTO in the base repository interface, which could work, but then why? Like it doesn't really give you all the things because base DTO would, wouldn't really do anything. But this is an option that you could do. So yeah, we cannot even do it here in the base repository. So we cannot do it here in the base repository as well. And we just need to create it here. And at this point, we just need to do return, you know, return blog posts. I'm sorry, return this model, create. And then we can fill all of the details. So title, title would be DTO title and published it. So either way, let's use it in a controller. So what we would do here is we would, you know, create a construct. And here we would inject a protected, you think, blog post repository, but in fact, we would inject the blog post repository interface. I uh, guess we want this flexibility so we can you know, replace that repository. If we ever need that, we can easily replace that. And this makes sense. Uh, now this won't work out of the box. What we need to do to make it work is go to app service provider. In the register method, we could do this app bind. Here we would do blog posts repository interface and bind it to blog post repository. And I'm sorry, I actually made a mistake. So if we go to our blog post repository, I return a model. What we should do here is return an array. And now we are able to defer this uh, eloquent call to this repository. Create. And my EID doesn't understand what's going on because the interface uh, doesn't have our methods, and this makes sense. It's a mistake that I did. Um, we should copy the declaration of this method and add it to our interface. And this should return an array. Or a class, just not eloquent model. So we could do to array or we could just, you know, pass it as, as a standard class, uh, whatever you prefer. And now we just need to add the return type. So going back to our controller, now we are able to call this repository create. And here we can pass blog post DTO. And this should be a public static function from request, then pass the request. This and everything can now be wrapped in blog post resource, make. So here's how we would create a test, which we need to make sure that everything is working. So let's just do, so we need to import the test case, which I didn't. So now we could do something like, you know, this post, uh, API v1 posts, and here we could pass the payload. So we could do something like title test. And I know why it has return. We basically want that search okay, search successful, and then we can search database count on blog posts one. So we obviously need to change the, the comment to test and now we can run it. And so what we should do is we should just do object and this should return an STD class and then fix our repository to return an STD class. And this should solve our problem. I forgot that you cannot pass a race uh, to repositories. Like you cannot use repository make uh, which we use here on an array, unless it's a collection. So this is my bad. I'm super sorry. Now the update here, uh, you know, that it's pretty much 
all the same. Now for the update, what you could do is you could pass an int for the ID and then the DTO. For the delete, we will just accept an int of ID. Uh, what else we had? We had read all. So it can be just called all and it will return an array. And then we can also get show, which will return an std class. All show, create, update, delete. I think that's all of them. So first of all, let us adjust our controller. This repository, delete blog posts ID. Here we'll just copy this, paste it here, change it from create to update, then do blog posts ID. Here we'll do this repository, show blog post ID. And here we could do this repository all. And now what we need to do is implement those methods in our blog post repository. And this you know, won't be out of work. Here we simply need to return this all. Here we need to, to return this. It should be find, not show, obviously. And it's actually covered in our base class, so we don't need that here. In our, uh, yeah, let's remove show. It should be find. And we have find in our base repository. We can probably move the all to base repository as well. Because, you know, this seems like something that would be reused. I don't think you'd ever or pretty much never call all in a real world project though. But yeah, uh, on the update, we can simply do, do this model update, uh, model update TTO. You need to have to drag this and then paste it here. Let me also cast this to array. It should be this model all. I'm making so many mistakes. I'm super sorry, guys. Let's cast this to array. And this one should be casted to objects and return std class. And return std class. Okay, either way, um, this model find ID, update, burn, top, this model find, we can std class, I'm sorry, object, uh, then this, then to array. There is a couple of other ways you could try it, so it's not as bad, but you know what I mean, uh, you'd potentially do something like, you know, okay, let's, let's do it the proper way. So model is this, right? If there is no model, you could throw a new exception. Otherwise you could simply do model update, pass the data, pass this to array. to do something like this so it's more readable uh, i don't know if that's actually needed but now we can just do you know turn object model to array we could create a helper function called cast to object where you could pass the model and you know what let's actually do it i'm not sure like i'm pretty sure it shouldn't be in the repository uh but who cares? It's our project. Can do private function format. Here we could pass the model. We could simply do return object model to array. This will return in you know, STD class. So now we could do Something like, you know, this format. 
it obviously shouldn't be protected. Uh, I'm sorry, it should be private, it should be protected. And now you could, you know, replace this with this format. Or you could just write a class that would wrap it, or there is a lot of things you can do. You can extend the base model and add a wrap. You can override the two array. There is there is a lot of things you can do. It doesn't matter. Um, so again, here we could basically return the same pattern to this, and then return model delete. This would return a boolean. It's not compatible with our uh, our declaration here, so let's just change that to bool, and we should be good. So let's change the show here to find, and this is basically the the pattern. If this is something that's nice to you, use it. You're building an enterprise application where you cannot you can't really risk a lot, uh, in the sense that there is a lot of data. Uh, there is a lot of complex queries, there is a lot of like caching and stuff like that. Repositories are great for encapsulating logic, especially for like, you know, caching stuff, for accessing stuff from the third party. Uh, you can just use them to, to extend your app, make it more secure, and do better testing. There is a lot of benefits, a lot of drawbacks. It takes a lot of time to write all of this, especially if you like want to use repositories, but you also want to use services. So then, you know, your controller would call a service that would call a repository that would call your eloquent model and only then get the data. So we have like this, this really big, this really big funnel, right? That you have to pass all the data and responses back and forth. Uh, but again, great pattern where it applies, bad pattern where it doesn't, it can easily over engineer your application in a second. But if you know what you're doing, go for it. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.